Just a few quick words about uh, Black Elk Speaks. Um, well, if you can't understand it, you're not alone, okay? Um, this is nothing if not mystic, I can tell you that. It's quite an interesting story. I hope you'd bother to read the head note and uh, my notes as well uh, on, uh, on some speculation as to how this all came about. Uh, what you see on your screen there, I believe, is if, I'm, if, I'm, if I've got the right photos here, uh, are Black Elk as a young man and Black Elk uh, in 1940. Um, he died, I believe, in 1950, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of speculation. He, he got ill as a boy, and that's one of the reasons why he may have experienced this, etc. What's important is that, yes, it's a mystic trance, a mystic experience. It's about sort of transcending his own, um, his own world, um, and it, it, the otherworldliness of it is important, and I don't want to play this up too much, but, you know, you know, fortunately, we've not been part of a culture that was in collapse. Um, uh, at least I hope we're not right now. Um, but we've not been in an environment like that. When you look at cultures that collapse, uh, and, and, and by that, that can happen through conquest. It can happen through technology. It can happen through disease. It can happen a lot of different ways. You know, one of the things that people tend to do frequently is to turn to the other world. They turn to the spiritual. Um, and uh, some people might say this is a very positive thing. Maybe they should have been more spiritual all along. I don't know. Uh, but it certainly is the case. And, and I don't want to describe this necessarily as escapism, but um, it, it uh, undoubtedly much of its appeal was in its otherworldliness because the world that someone like Black Elk was living in was to say the very least, changing, and changing for the worse for people of his, um, of, of his uh, tribe and others. Um, we are outside of the experience that he's having in time, obviously, this was over 100 years ago, certainly for, I'm going to guess, all of us in the class, maybe not, but outside of his culture, and beyond doubt outside of his life experience uh, as well. So it makes it a lot more complex. I think you just have to read it and, 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 and just see what you can glean from it as a mystical narrative. The two questions that I think you should ask yourself is what did the other people, what did others see in this? You know, he, he's relating this uh, experience from the time of his youth and it finally gets set down in writing uh, by, uh, by Nyhart, I believe is how he pronounces his name. You know, what did other people find appealing about it? That's really telling. If you can answer that question, you can answer a lot of things. Secondly, what did they think that it meant? Uh, I don't know what it means. I don't know. Uh, I can kind of speculate and piece some things together and tell you that it has certain characteristics and traits and it seems to be pointed in certain directions. But in terms of what it all meant, that's a pretty big stretch for me. Uh, as you'll see in the discussion, I'm going to have this wide open discussion where I'm going to allow you just to freely speculate. Uh, please give reasons why you think it might mean this or that or the other, but, but uh, I, think, I think that's what you have to come to terms with. The fact that it's a mystic, otherworldly sort of thing, I don't want to, again, talk about this as being necessarily escapist, but it's hard to avoid the notion that its popularity may have had something to do with the fact that it seems to have promised a glimpse into a world that was not quite so tragic or not destined to be so tragic. And in that sense, maybe it offered hope. That's as close as I can get, folks. Uh, we'll see what you guys think.